Wow. That's it. <laughs> and that was, honestly, that I don't, up right I don't there, really guys. get a lot of objections on that. No, and that's part of it. One, you're confident in saying it. Yeah. You've said it enough. You've had positive results from saying it. You know it works. And the client is just, all the clients want is someone to be confident, right? And it's yeah. difficult when you're brand new to be confident, but how do you get confident as a brand new agent? You listen to trainings. You fake it. You fake it. You listen to trainings and yeah. you say their words over and over and over and over again until they're yours. And then it's not you talking, it's Vanessa talking. And now Vanessa protects 25 families a month and you will do so the same as you progress and adopt her word tracks. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Grady Polson here, Family First Life America. Excited to be on with you today. We've got Miss Vanessa Powell, protects 25 plus families a month, has an agency protecting over 400 families a month, and has uh, an incredible mindset around this business, is driven as all get out, and has is actually in process of pioneering a new way to find clients through referrals. And referrals have always been a thing, but it's like, how do you comfortably make someone share with you information that maybe they're not comfortable giving. And I found, I think the way that you guys have tactfully come up with it and it's working um, is one of the most interesting parts about what you're going on. But before we get to that, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. It's a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be alive. So <laughs> I'm going to settle down for a little bit. I'd love if you would tell everyone a little bit about you, where you're from, how you found sure. FFL, a little backstory, and then we'll jump into some more stuff. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm Vanessa. I'm the agency owner of FFL Takeover. Um, I've been with the company for a year and a half or so. Okay. Been in the business for over two years. Was with a practice company beforehand, okay. working as a captive agent. Um, over there, I uh, was actually I wasn't working with Josh Williams, but I had met him once okay. at Top Golf, and um, he. I followed him on Instagram and I wasn't happy where I was at. And I heard that he was transitioning over to um, FFL and okay. I called him immediately and said, all right, let's do it. So since then, um, I had to get my license and okay. get all that stuff in order. And I started back in uh, July of 2021. Or, okay. What yeah, were you doing doing before your practice company? Um, I was working in real estate. So okay. yeah, I'd gotten my license, didn't really do anything with that, was working in property management. And I was also going through school. I was, you know, paying myself through school and okay. it was really tough serving, bartending, yeah. trying to get my degree. And yeah, very proud of that too. What were you going to school for? <laughs> Business. There you go. Where'd you go? ASU. They're great. Yeah. Are you WB Carey? Yeah. Look at you. Oh man. Uh huh. I went all I, four years. I didn't really have a you know college life, but a lot of discipline during my time there. W. So for those who are W Carey is like a top twenty business school, and it's at ASU, which is incredible. I could not get into WB Carey. I got a BIS degree from ASU with communications and a so and and like sociology or something. Oh, no. But I got my, I walked. My mom's proud. I've got the diploma. But to, to sit next to a WB Carey graduate. Wow, it's like I'm famous, huh? You, you're and you're smart too, which is <laughs> which is good, which is even more impressive that now you see that's the thing. You get sometimes people are so smart. They're like, ah, sell life insurance, and you're like, ah, have you seen how it works? I know. Like. Like sometimes, sometimes people understand. are so smart they don't they don't want to take a take a leap into something. But I want keep going. So, so business degree. Yeah. Then you got a practice company. Then FFL. So let's talk about yeah. your, your your beginnings here and and your thoughts around what what excited you about what you do here. Yeah, absolutely. So I started uh, working like I said in July of 2021, um, and then I was working in home sales. Uh, we all were actually. Mm -hmm. And basically I was in Arizona and Josh and Mel were traveling the country, um, you know, running in homes. Yeah. And I had never really met them before. Like, like I said, I met Josh once at Top Golf, and they both were like, Hey, like, why don't you come out to uh, Philadelphia across the country and like, come out and let's work. And I said, all right. So I left, I booked a plane ticket two hours later and I left. So then yeah. I ended up, um, Keep going. Yeah, I ended up, you know, uh, I had just gotten a lease uh, with my apartment. I ended up canceling my lease and buying out of that so that way I could travel the country for the next six months working at home. And then we transitioned fully telesales um, back in like, you know, November, December, 2021. You guys were like a gypsy caravan for like nine it months. It was crazy. We were homeless for yeah. like months on end. It was so the wildest thing. Like when I talk about it now, I'm like, how the heck did I do that for so long? Like it was so crazy, but we did it, you know, and it was the best decision 
it humbled us for sure. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So um, in home and then you transitioned to virtual. What was that originally like and what's it like now? It was very, very tough transitioning telesales because, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. And, um, you know, thankfully, you know, a few of the good leaders, you know, made a, a script and we just kept readjusting it over time. We still readjust the script today because we're still testing out things and seeing yeah. what works, seeing what doesn't work. But um, it's been amazing. I don't have any in-home uh, agents anymore. They all work wow. telesales and they all do fantastic and have a great R ROI. So I'm very thankful that that was implemented a year, year ago. Yeah. It's, um, I remember the first that you texted me a couple months ago, you're like, Hey, can I come to the office? And I was like, of course you're like, but like at night. And I was like, at night, she's like, yeah, we want to have a Hawaii night. And I was like a Hawaii night. Like you were going to put sand down and bring like a hula skirt. Yeah. Like I didn't know what Hawaii night meant. Like you're drinking Mai Tais, like what's happening. Yeah. And then she's like, no, we call Hawaii leads until 11 at night because yeah. 11 so at 11 here, what time is it in Hawaii? They're three hours behind. Three hours behind. So, so it's eight, eight o'clock, yeah, which is incredible. So the thought process that it takes your business from being so um, locally <clears throat> located, which is, you know, when I used to run appointments, I mean, I'd run eight in a day. I'd run 32 appointments a week. I would be driving hundreds of miles a day, thousands of miles a week. I was doing fantastically well, but I was geographically limited. And then you transition now mm -hmm. and you're like, well, I live in Arizona. I can call leads in Hawaii at night and I can call leads in Atlanta in the morning and I can go to the gym mm. in the middle of the day if I want because I'm because yeah. I'm putting in plenty of work time and getting my goals. But now I've designed designing your own life versus having to be beholden to when the clients are home. Yeah, I also think, too, from an agency building perspective, it's just a lot more functional, too. You know, we used to take people in the home with us and you can't bring 20 people in the home with you. The, the client's going to be very scared and they're like, OK, there's a mafia coming in here. Let's yeah. let's get these people out. I'm not buying insurance. But when you know, that's how we would train. We take people into the home one by one. And now it's you know, I can sell on Zoom and I can have 20, 30 of my agents is watching me. So it, it, agency building, it's a lot more functional, too. In my that's opinion, awesome. but in-home definitely does work, but telesales has been the move for us. That's awesome. It's Thanks. incredible to see that. I love it. Okay. So what's your schedule you run and what do you, you run and what do you coach or what do you see as a good schedule for a new agent and, a, and a, your best producers? Uh, like a day to day when I start. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. What's your, cause, cause there's a bunch of people out there that are going, she's successful. I'm not successful yet. You're a good person. You love your wife and her husband and love your kids. All are fine. We're not judging you as a person, but if I was not successful and I wanted to copy someone that's successful, I would see what she, does she do every day? What does she eat? When does she work out? What does she watch? What does she listen to? Okay. How much does she dial? Like, what does she do? And then I'll just adopt those habits, right? That's it. All, all, all life of, of lack of results is accumulation of not the right habits and not the yeah. right things that we're doing. And when people that have achieved success, it's, there's no differentiation in, in, whom you are in the eyes of your partner or who you are in the eyes of your church or who you are in the eyes of anything. It's just your habits haven't yielded you the results that more successful people have. So what are your habits and schedules and what are the things that you do that make, that make you tick? Yeah. Normal. <laughs> yeah. Make you normal. <laughs> make me, they, they, um, yeah. I mean, 2022 was like, it's just crazy when I think about like January to December, it's just like, I'm a whole different person, awesome. like mentally, physically, like financially as well. Like just complete, it makes me like emotional talking about it because it's, it's such okay. a difference. Yeah, but, I, um, me too. Yeah, me too. I know. <laughs> me too. It's incredible business. Yeah, it is. But you know, my day to day, um, I, it's honestly very boring. Um, you know, I've, I've cut out a lot of things in my life. I told my family, Hey, look, like I'm going to be kind of MIA the next few years. I'm not coming to birthdays. I'm not coming on vacations. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. I actually just saw my family for the first time in like a year and a half for Christmas. Um, but you know, they all know like what I like the mission I'm on. So they, it's not like they get mad or upset. So I think that's the first thing is like making the people in your wife, in your life aware of like what you're doing. So they don't take that as personal, you know, like your friends or family, but, um, you know, I wake up typically at, it just depends if I'm going to the gym or not. I think health is essential. So I go to the gym typically five to six days a week. Awesome. Um, I've been trying to go in the morning cause I'm just so exhausted at night. Yeah. So I've been trying to wake up at 5 AM and go before I start working and I'll typically be on zoom around seven thirty eight. Nice. Um, and then I'll typically, uh, you know, handle a little bit of maybe like meetings or admin work that mm -hmm. I have going on. And then I'll probably start dialing around eight thirty nine, um, nine to, you know, 12 
I'll dial my first round of dials. What's your goal in that period of time? Is it dial goal? Is it a connection goal? Presentation goal? It's, um, it just kind of depends. So I would say 300 dials. From nine to 12? Yep. Nice. That's a win. That's a win. Um, one sale is a win as well. Okay. And then um, maybe like two presentations is a win as well. So how if you many, have any of those wins, it's it's considered. How many connections a good do you expect to make in three hundred dials? Like even mm, just phone answers. Yeah. Um, I would say three hundred dials. That means you're dialing, you know, hundred leads. Yep. Triple dial. Um, you'll probably talk to honestly twenty people. Okay. Um, Which is fine. I mean, people are working. They're not home. Old numbers are working. Older leads, right? Yeah. When you get a ninety cent lead, they're not already to buy, right? Yeah. There, some have already bought. Some of them have already died, right? So, <laughs> right. So, yeah. So yesterday, okay, so like you hold for people. yeah, yesterday, like for example, I had two two presentations, two sales before um, noon, and then I had about seventy dials ish. Nice. So that's pretty good. Um, and then once I you know have the first round of dials, I'll take a lunch, take a break. Um, maybe take some phone calls, answer texts, um, and then I'll get back to my second round of dials, which is like typically one to three thirty ish. Okay. I'll take another break at three thirty, get a snack, and then um, I'll have my last round of session and go till um, five, six, seven, depending how long that takes. So when you're so we're dialing in Arizona, mm -hmm. and you are in Mountain Time. Right. right. But then let's just use the nine to 12 example since that was when we were focused on. Where do you want to be dialing from? Do you want to be dialing in mountain time? Do you want to be dialing East Coast? Are you dialing California? So it's Pacific time zone. Do you think about that? Is that something that you're um, like, oh, I know it's lunchtime over here or it's dinner time. I want to call different. Mm -hmm. Like, are you strategic about where you call when you call? I'll be honest. No, I think that as long as you're just dialing, someone's going to answer. Someone's okay. going to pick up. Um, I dial a lot of East Coast. Uh, but if I want to work late hours, you know, let's say 8, 9, 10, 11, I'm going to be dialing Hawaii, you know, because those people are getting off work. They're ready to talk to you. And like, obviously, you can't dial other states because, you know, it's, it's past that time. Correct. So um, I, I do dial a lot of um, East Coast, I would say. That's cool. So you get so, it done early. So if you're dialing yeah. till 5. And you get to have dinner, go have yes. a life. You get to then go work out if you did in the morning. You get, you know, but you're working from 8 till 5. With a lunch. Yeah. But I, you're dialing 500 to 600 dials, making exactly. three to seven presentations and two to four sales. Mm -hmm. Well, and then I try to handle any like agency things that I have to do after five. You know, if I have to do a one-on-one -on -one with an agent mm -hmm. or whatever the case is, case is, I try to do it outside of my dialing time. That way it's not interfering with my sales. I think that's huge. So you treat your business like a job. Yeah. So you just like, you know, you just clock in hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> interesting. Try way, my interesting the way success works. So, um... Okay. So schedule, great schedule. Thank is you. that four or five days a week? Do you try yeah, to, do I try you... to do that five days a week, Saturdays, um, a little more laid back, try to do more yeah, recruiting. I mean, it's okay to have a life. It's just mm -hmm. like, but what the thing is, is it when you don't have the ca capacity or facilities or financial um, money in order to have a life, you have to give up everything. Like I, for yeah. my first two years, I gave up everything. I didn't go to, I didn't play softball. I didn't do fantasy football. I didn't watch, I didn't go watch college games on Saturday. I did. I worked Monday at 6 a.m. through Saturday at midnight running appointments or dialing. And then Sunday we'd go to church and go to go out to, go out to a nice big old breakfast and dad would have pancakes, right? That's what we do on Sundays. But six mm -hmm. days a week, it is all out. And yeah, it, it's taken me a long time to get here too. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm 23 years old and it's like, you know, I could be old. out doing a bunch of stuff and I, I wanted to, but you know, I've wanted to go on vacation with my friends, but yeah. you know, it's, I, it's not the time. It's, it's not, not the my time. time yet. It's not the time. You can stay in a nicer room in a couple of years when you go on vacation. Yeah. You're not going to, you don't have to, you don't have to share, don't have a roommate anymore. Yeah, People exactly. are like, Hey, you want to bunk up for a convention? I'm like, I don't, I don't, yeah. I, I love you. I, but I, that's what I said this year. I'm like, I'm getting myself something nice. Last year we were in a not so nice Airbnb. Hey, this year we're doing something nice. <laughs> that's good. That's, this is, this is the goal, right? So, so let's hear yeah, the words. Sure. So let's hear the words and then we'll do the referrals at the end. Cause okay. that was, cause people are right here going, where's the referral script? It's coming. Just wait, it's coming. Mm -hmm. So, um, you call ring, ring, don't role play with me cause I end up screwing it up, but just kind of pretend okay. you're, I, I try to be funny and I end up screwing it up or I try to be too serious. And so just act like you're calling whomever. Okay. I can role play with myself. I do it per all the time. Per perfect. I talk to myself in the shower and the mirror. Like <laughs> I, I got this. I'm Don't good worry. Enough. I'm smart enough. And gosh, darn it. All people right. like me. That's a, that's, um, 
SNL <laughs> So, no, go ahead. So yeah. tell me, um, go ahead. But yeah, so you're dialing, we're in that nine to two session, right? We're focused on our business. We're okay. using phone burner. I use phone burner. I think it's the best. I've awesome. used other systems and I always revert back to phone burner. Most simple, best way to train your agency too. It's good. Um, but yeah, so we, do, we triple dial always okay. three times. Um, they answer whenever and they say hello. Hey, Mary. I always say hey because I feel like it's a very chill approach. I don't say, hello, yeah. is this John? Like mm -hmm. it's not, it's just too much, right? Hey, Mary. Then they say, yeah, who is this? Hey, Mary, this is Vanessa. Just calling you back here about the request you had sent in uh, for your life insurance. You listed your birthday here as uh, 10 9 Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Great. So just kind of let you know we had processed that request and we just do everything virtually now. So just takes about five minutes. Go ahead and grab a pen and paper and we'll get this out of the way. I'll wait for you. That's it. Complete control. Direct, yeah. well-toned. No objections there, but... <laughs> No objections. That was an easy yeah, one. no. Okay, so let's. I mean, I can go. Uh, I didn't fill anything out. Yep. So you listed your birthday here as ten nine ninety nine. That's your birthday, right? Yeah, that's my birthday. Okay, not a problem. So I just have to go ahead and close out your file here. That way, you stop getting calls. So go ahead and grab a pen and paper, and we'll knock this out. It takes about five minutes. I'll wait. Control. Okay. I already got that taken care of. Perfect. I know. That's exactly why I'm calling you. We just wanted to make sure you got your policy paperwork. Did you get that? I haven't seen anything come in yet. Okay, yeah, it looks like we sent it out to the 123 Main Street. Is that your address? That is my address. Okay, perfect. So let me go ahead and get this updated for you. Go ahead and grab a pen and paper. I'm going to give you my information. Excellent. <laughs> um, it's, it's getting really good at handling the objections, how you're going to get from point A to point B. Point A is the you know phone objections. Point B is the sale. You got to get really good at point A. So... Um, you guys keep calling me. I told you I'm not interested. Yeah, I know. I'm really sorry. I'm just calling to close out your file. It'll just take about five minutes. Go ahead and grab a pen and paper. So everything is right back to the script. Yeah. Always just revert. I keep it very simple. You know, you don't got to really explain a lot of things and go into a bunch of things. Just always revert back to them getting a pen and paper. Because once they do that, that means it's business. It's business. And you've also given them a task and they've done it. Yeah. Right. Once they do it, they're being. They're ready. Uh, they're ready. They're being compliant, which is a key word in sales. If you can get them to be compliant and do, if I can go, okay, perfect. We need you to do this on one foot. Like if we could get all of our yeah. clients to stand up and stand on one foot the whole time, they'd have a bunch of laydowns, but they're not going to do that. So we get them to get pens Yeah. or we get them to get water if you're in the home. <laughs> Oh, we, I uh, never did that. I was a little bit nervous to do that in the home, but oh, the water! Yeah, I've the seen best. your, I've seen your stuff. I would, I'd, I'd water every time, and because hey, what's your social? Can I get a water? That's right. Like, it's, that's it's perfect, <laughs> and we just need your, uh, your driver's license and a voided check. And if you could just give me some water, I want that white stuff to start forming on the corner of my mouth like my grandpa. <laughs> and they would always be like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry, I didn't bring you any water already." And now you own them because they're like, they feel guilty for not like having this person in their home for 25 minutes talking about death, talking <laughs> about their kids, and they didn't offer you any water. So, but that's in the home so it's fair okay so let's get back on track so you i've got a pen and paper what's next yeah so at that point i just have them say go ahead and write down my name it's vanessa my last name is powell p-o-w-e-l-l -L. and then i give them my license number and i just say that's my license number they just require me to leave that with you the department of insurance okay and then I just go straight into the script. I so ask them. So kind of, kind of do it for us. If you, yeah, you know about, sure. You know so I ask them, you know, I give them my credibility and then I'll ask them just a few questions that way I kind of know what I'm working with. Um, you know, was this cover just for you or were you looking for your spouse as well? That's how you're going to get his and hers asking that question. Okay. Um, I ask them if they have any current coverage in place or any funeral and final expense. And if, if they do, I, you know, dig a little bit further into that. You know, what, which one of our companies do you have? Do you have that through work? Is it, you know. How much are you paying a month? About how much coverage do you have? Um, you know, I'll ask him, have you been trying to get this set up for a while or am I the first person you've talked to? Um, are, are you working? You retired? And then um, from there, once I kind of know what I'm working with, where they're at with this process of buying insurance, I'll just explain who I am, what I do, and um, I'll go through the financial inventory sheet after that. Okay. And then that's pretty much it. I'll, I'll pitch uh, three options. Max, the option you want them to pick in a starter program. You call them anything? Um, nope. I, I don't do gold, silver, bronze. I think it's too much for them to write. It's okay. one more thing for the client to do. So I just have them write down their options. 40, 30, 20 um, is typically what I pitch. Okay. Even if it's like outrageous for the 400, I'll still pitch it. Because a lot okay. of people actually pick the max a lot of times. It's crazy, right? So yeah, I'll pitch once they pick. Um, 
you know, I will basically just go into the app at that point. And then I just kind of build more credibility through the app. I don't try to, you know, do a lot of small talk while we're, you know, picking a program and going through that because I feel like they feel like we're friends and they can say no to me, right. you know? So once, you know, they pick an option, then at that point I can say, oh, okay, how, you know, how are you from here? Or how many grandbabies do you have? Or things like that too, through the That's app. Good. Um, how do you get the social and driver's license and bank information? Just, just, yeah. Yeah. So the social. Those are things people sometimes get hung up on. Yeah, of course. And um, I think one of the things that really helped me too is when we first started telesales, I was getting, you know, the banking objection kind of a lot. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? Right. And I just wasn't giving people that um, idea that it was coming. Right. So before I even start the app, I'll just say, Hey, just so you know, too, I, I know you haven't gotten insurance before, so I'll just explain how it works. You know, we're just going to enter in your um, your contact information, your height, your weight, all that stuff. And then we'll just select your beneficiary, which will be who the money will go to if anything happened to you. Um, they'll ask for your social to verify your identity. And then lastly, we'll just select whatever bank routing and account number you'd like to use. But, you know, nothing is due today. Okay. All that sound good. Great. Go into the app. Boom. And then when I ask for the that social, what point? early, right before the app starts, before the app, yeah. Got it. And then for the social, um, I say it like this. I've heard many people just say, "What's your social?" and they get it. But I just, I just personally always say it like this. Still, I just say, "All right, Mary, I'm just going to put you through the verification process here. So just be honest with me for these questions, okay? Okay. Okay. Are you a legal U.S. citizen? Yes. Okay. What state were you born in? Arizona. Okay. Go ahead and verify your social. Okay. And then they say they're social. Wow. That's it. <laughs> and that was, honestly, that I don't, showing up right I don't there, really guys. get a lot of objections on that. No, and that's part of it. One, you're confident in saying it. Yeah. You've said it enough. You've had positive results from saying it. You know it works. And the client is just, all the clients want is someone to be confident, right? And it's yeah. difficult when you're brand new to be confident, but how do you get confident as a brand new agent? You listen to trainings. You fake it. You fake it. You listen to trainings and yeah. you say their words over and over and over and over again until they're yours. And then it's not you talking, it's Vanessa talking. And now Vanessa protects 25 families a month and you will do so the same as you progress and adopt her word tracks. Yeah. Even if you don't know what you're saying, as long as you have confidence saying it, they're going to think, oh yeah, that's that's right. Right? Even if yeah. you don't know what you're saying, I always, like when, when the client's on hold and my agent is about to go say something, I said, I know you don't know what you're saying, but you have to say it confidently. Okay? So like, let's... Let's get your chest out. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So then they do it and they say it really confident, even though they don't know what they're pitching or what they're saying. They just say it confidently and, you know, it helps. It's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Okay. Thanks. So what other, anything else you do to button up? Anything you say at the end to like solidify the sale or to ward off any other agents that may be calling your lead or to keep mm -hmm. increase credibility with the client? Yeah. And I'll go over the referrals too um, in a minute. But basically at the end, you know, um, I just make sure that they're serious about it. Hey, just want to make sure this is something you fully understand. You know, the ten thousand dollars for a hundred and you know fifty a month is you know is that going to be something you can maintain every single month going forward? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Do I have your permission to go ahead and submit this over? Yeah. And then I just that's pretty much it. And then I'll say you know just so you know too, I'm going to go ahead and close out your file. Um, you might still receive a few calls, people wanting to review your policy, but if they do, just go ahead and tell them you got it taken care of and you're working with Vanessa. Clean. And that's it. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. So let's talk about, so those are, that's, she does that with leads and she does it with referrals. So let's talk about how are you now, um, protected seven families last week with referrals alone. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Like seven or eight eight families last week and just referrals. So talk to us how you're, how you're doing it, where, how you're planting seeds, what you're saying, how you're executing it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't come up with this at all. I, okay. I definitely, you're credit for it right I'm, now, so. I'm really good at taking things that people implement or, you know, that I hear them say or things that they're doing. And I, I do it myself. I think that's the biggest thing. It's like, okay, I'll take this little piece from this person and this, and just take that's it good. all on your presentation. But basically, you know, we were trying to come up with ideas to increase our ROI with, the leads and everything. And we thought, why the heck are we not asking for referrals? Um, and so we had a great team that we work with come up together with a great process and system. And it, it's actually really easy. It's nothing crazy. Like yeah. all we do is when we're collecting, you know, the beneficiary and the contingent in the app, okay. uh, we'll say, you know, obviously we should know their beneficiary at that point. Okay. What's a great emergency? What's a good emergency contact? 
How are you, huh? asking, how are you asking for the beneficiary? I mean, just... It's on the app. It says, who do you want this to go to? Something like, how are you saying it? How do you ask Yeah. For it? So if something had happened to yesterday, Mary, who would be taking care of, you know, your funeral and final expenses? Uh, my, my John or my son, John. Okay, okay. So he's your beneficiary, I assume. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and put him down. What's his last name? Smith. Smith. Okay, great. So John Smith and that's your son, correct? Correct. Okay, perfect. What's a good emergency contact for him? Excellent. And I think the important thing is saying emergency contact, because if you say what's their phone number, they might be a little skeptical, you know? Okay. So then we'll just collect a contingent and then we collect three emergency contacts as well. So how do you guess for the contingent? So if John, if God forbid something happens to John in this period of time, what, who do, would you like the money to go to if John's not around yeah, still? Exactly. I just say who would be someone second to John? Okay. And then they say my, my daughter, Mary. Great. Uh, Mary Smith. That's her full name. Great. Your daughter. Okay. Awesome. What's a good emergency contact for her? Perfect. And then now we just have to list three separate emergency contacts. Who would those three be? What, what for? Yep. Just for your application. Who okay. would those three be? Okay. Control. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So three emergency contacts. Okay. Then you've got five, five people yeah. that are connected to Mary or Betty. Mm -hmm. What now what's the next step? Um, at that point, I'm still kind of working out the nicks and figuring out what's working best, but I, this is what I did last week. I basically, we will send out like a group text with the person we sold and then the referral and we'll say, you know, our, our, our message says, um, sorry, once I finish up the sale is when I send that text message, um, is I'll put them in a group chat with the person I sold and their referral that they gave me. And I'll just say, Hey, uh, you know, Mary, I just helped your mom with her life insurance. Um, she listed you here as her emergency contact. Please reply yes if you accept that responsibility. And they reply yes. And then I'll just text again and say thank you. I just need to find a quick time to go over this with you. It should just take about five minutes. Okay. That's it. And then I call them up. I go and I give them their, you know, their mom or their whoever I just sold their um yeah, just like the information, the company, okay. all that stuff. And then I just say, um, and which one of our companies do you have your insurance through? Oh, I have it through work. Okay, perfect. And do you know what company that's through? I don't know. Nancy at HR set it up. Okay. And do you know about how much coverage you have? Uh, I think 5000 Oh, okay. Was there a reason you only went with 5000 It just was an option on my paycheck. Okay, perfect. Well, most people actually have coverage outside of work. So let me go ahead and pull up some options for you. It'll just take about five minutes. And then I give them... I just go into the script again. Same thing. Sick. Yeah, but Sick. I think it's really, it's super easy, guys. Like, it's nothing crazy. Tell them it's super oh, easy. Sorry. No, super I easy, like, guys. I like that. And like, it, we can all do it too. We should have been doing this a long time ago because it's nothing crazy. It's not like it's any a, secret sauce, you it's know? It's an actionable process, right? Like, so the, yeah. what, what happens most, it's like, okay, get make sure you get referrals. Hey, do you have anybody you want to refer me that I can sell insurance to? Like, that's such a not way to ask yeah. for referrals, right? Even if they like you, it's still uncomfortable for them to do that because, you know, nowadays people don't want to be called. They don't want to be talked to. So when you approach it more- They don't want you more, giving their number. Why'd you give my number yeah. to, the, to Orange Theory Fitness? They exactly. are texting me twice a week every week for a free class and I what did it one time and it killed me yeah so. it was funny because one of the people I sold last week they were very hesitant about me texting them and they were like I'm just a little bit cautious because people don't typically use texting as a method of contact they were kind of sassy to me right so I still called them and went through the process and at the end of the call I ended up you know getting her coverage and she was like I'm so sorry that I was an attitude with you I just didn't know what this was think about that though too. if she's that <laughs> like cautious crazy. in the text messages how many cards is she filling out how many phone is she calling in how many leads she's but not no, doing that anything. was the, that was the referral no i know but oh, that, okay. that person yeah. they're not filling out anything they right. have their they have no insurance they're cautious and skeptical you might be the only person that's ever approached them for life insurance I was. like like you're we're literally helping people who would never know or be helped by just doing our job and getting mm -hmm. referrals because like, the standard way was you know, hey, Morgan, who do you know that, that maybe I could do a job for like I've done for you today? You know, as you know, I'm a licensed insurance broker. This is my profession. And and a lot of people fill out requests, but we also take care of other people. Do you have anybody that you could refer to me like or, or can give to me or that I could call on your behalf to put to take care of? Like, uh, I don't know, maybe my my friend, John, like 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 there might be one or two people. But yeah. when you do it this direction where it's part of the app. And it is you are you're doing you, you are providing a service. We are letting three people know that Mary just got insurance. Yeah. Right. Mary just got insurance. We wanted you to know that. God forbid something happens to her. Here's my number. Call me so we can get it processed as fast as possible and get yeah. her paid. And make sure John and, and, and Janie or 
Betty and Mary and John, whoever, gets the policy paid out when got when something happens. Right. And oh, also, I'm a broker. Do you have insurance? Yeah. And like everyone needs it too. And it's funny because I talk to these people and they're like, I've been thinking about this for a while. I'm like, yeah, funny. It's like God brought us together. But I think too, I've, I've been working a lot of like social media stuff too, like referrals there. And if you make yourself known as someone who does insurance and is in that world, yeah. people will just naturally reach out to you. So yeah. you look on my Instagram, my LinkedIn, my TikTok, everyone knows I work in insurance. So they just come to me, you know, if you're, the, if you're the insurance girl or the insurance guy, you're the TikTok queen. I don't Thank know you. Yeah. What, what is your TikTok? It's, <laughs> um, my TikTok is just, uh, Vanessa dot Powell, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So I just started it a few months ago. <laughs> and how many followers do you have? I have 60, 60 K. 60,000. 60,000. 60,000 yeah. followers on TikTok Thank giving you. sales and life insurance and life advice. Mm -hmm. And it's bringing her agents and it's bringing <laughs> her some clients. So, yeah. So, anything else with referrals? Just because that was, there was, so well, let me just for the people asking and people on here, we'll post, we'll get the, the words, we'll just post them in Slack so people can see it, make it easy for you. Sure. What, um, any other final things you do when it's just, just, you tell um, the client you're, you do a group text. Yeah, Does Mary I, I ever do. chime in and go, yeah, John, make sure you talk to Vanessa. She's incredible. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they have. Um, I think another thing too is, is just like just doing it, even if you're scared. You know, like just try it out. Like see what works, see what doesn't. Um, the, a lot of the people I sold last week, I actually sold all of their grandchildren too. So I I wrote you know a policy for the mom and dad, and then I said. Um, you know, oh, your sister got insurance on on her kids as well, so I'll go ahead and pull up some options for you. And then I did, and I, I sold all three sisters and all three of the grandchildren. Like it was, it was wild. I was like, <laughs> like that <Best>. just happened. <laughs> BBE, talk about that. What's the ROI on some on one text? One, well, I, I, the, the, the mom and the dad were the lead that I had, right? And then I collected, uh, I think, four or five referrals off of them, and so all together it was probably like. 10, 10 policies, 10 policies with the mom and the dad there. Cause you know, I sold the kids and the grandbabies and a bunch of stuff. Drop an R in the comments below. If you're excited about getting some referrals and increasing your ROI on your investment. So you yeah. use the leads to meet people and then use the beneficiaries and the phone numbers. What's their phone number? I, I have, I have thousands of beneficiaries without phone numbers. Me too. I have thousands. Me too, this last year. Oh, I this haven't is, been doing it. This was it's been, crazy. How many people? My 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 son lives around the corner. Why didn't I get your number? I because I was too busy. I had other appointments. But this is how you guys take your costs of your business and you drive down the expenses and drive out the profitability. So now close this out. Any final, okay. final advice you've got for us today? In the business? Oh, life, business, I don't know, life, fitness, business. diet, whatever, I, whatever you want. It's your call. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. I'm super thank you for blessed coming. to be here and in this business too. But um, I mean, I don't know, guys, like work. Like, it's so hard to give people advice because it's just like doing the baby steps every day to one, like you said, 1% better every day. And it's taken me a full year to be as disciplined as I am now. And it just comes with time. And I don't remember what they say, but it's like, if you do a habit for an X amount of days, that habit sticks with you. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like anything like, and just keep trying to get better, learn from other people, ask questions. I think that's the biggest thing. Asking questions, asking for help is huge. Um, you know, a lot of the connections I've made here in FFL has been simply me just like reaching out, like and reaching out and, and introducing myself sure. to, I'm really good at just networking and meeting people and putting myself out there. I think that's huge. Social media, how everything. Many people, how many people yelled at you or were mean to you when you asked for help? None. None. I had none. none. They actually were more willing to help me, um, you know, too. And I think if once you give a little bit to someone, they give you a lot more back. That's right. You know, that's, that's advice right there, guys. Most most successful people are genuinely nice people. It is very difficult to get to the top being a jerk. So Agreed. if you understand that, it's it's do yourself. A, and if you've got, you know, don't call and ramble their ear off for 30 minutes. But if you've got a quick business poignant question, there's a lot of successful people out there, especially great producers, top agency managers. And if there's something you're struggling with or something you need clarity on, get a hold of them and ask them, hey, 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 Morgan, I got a quick question. Could you just a real quick question? Won't take more than two minutes. Just wonder if you could give me a call back. I work with, I work with, uh, you know, Jamie mm -hmm. Cherry. I work with Vanessa, if, whatever. Yeah. Whoever you're working with, work with Marissa and shoot a quick text. And oh yeah, no problem. 
what's what's going on? Oh, I need to help with this. I keep struggling. Where are you finding these? What are the word checks used to get agents started? This is what I say. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. New perspective. Now your business changed. That's what you do. Yeah, I ask for a lot of help. And even if like the mentors that you have maybe here, like you don't fit with them or whatever the case is, find someone that you do align with. You know what I mean? And, and ask them for help too. I have great, I'm very blessed to have great sure. mentors, but I know some people, you know, may not have the mentor that they want. That's in, and, and, and that, but there's others out there willing to help and it's your business and you can build as big as you want. Yeah. And, and sky's the limit. Sky's honestly. the limit. So. All right, this is fantastic. Drop a VP in the comments below for Thanks, Vanessa guys. Powell. Show her some love. <laughs> Appreciate you all. Thank you for joining us.